start off this guide from levels 1 to 10, you want to be killing chickens. These can be found in Lumbridge and they are opposite the cow pen. You will get around 2k per hour XP, so you can go through the levels quite quickly here. You can also pick up the drops, they drop feathers, raw chickens and bones. If you do decide to pick them up to sell them, I would suggest burying the bones and then you can sell the feathers and the royal chicken for around 300 GP. So you can get a bit of money from this as well as some prayer. But I would recommend just leaving the drops as you'll get better XP and they're not worth too much so there isn't much point in dropping, picking them up. From levels 10 to 20, you want to be killing cows. These are found in Lumbridge, net opposite the chickens. These are slightly harder to kill than chickens, so I recommend bringing some food as they can hit quite high. You will also find some high levels here, and there's quite a lot of people. So there might be people stealing your kills, but there are plenty of cows to go around. And if you find a highly populated world, you can, they will, the cows will spawn faster. The XP per hour here is around 2 to 3k, so you will get more XP than chickens. And you can pick up the drops, as with last time. They drop raw beef, bones and cowhide. As before, I recommend burying the bones. And then you can sell the other drops for about five to 600 GP but I would recommend drop just leaving them on the floor as you'll get better XP this way. So now you'll be level 20 in your melee stats and now what you want to go kill is barbarians. These can be found south of Edgeville. As you can see I'm running there now from the Edgeville Lodestone just running south past this exam room right here and you'll see the pub which is in Barbarian Village. So you want to kill the barbarians here. This will get you, depending on your weapons and gear and stuff, you will could get around 10k per hour and that is this is the one barbarian you can't kill. But you can attack any of these ones. And as for drops, it's only bones most of the time, so unless you want to get the prayer XP, there isn't much point. So you can get charms as well, which I would pick up, because these can be used for summoning. But that's not too important right now. You can pick up the coins if you want, and then just bury the bones. But as always, for the best XP, you will just want to kill them without picking up the drops and these are level 10 you can also get I believe there's level 8 barbarians as well maybe they're in the pub I'm not sure well, there's level 17 there and level 17 so as you get slightly stronger you can kill the ones in the pot in the pub but at the beginning you might just want to stay outside and kill these slightly weaker ones For levels 40 to 60, you want to go to the Stronghold of Security. And if you don't know where it is, you just go down that little entrance in the oars and you'll be on the first level. If you haven't completed this before, you'll have to go through the whole maze to get to the centre and then you can go down the next level. But as I've completed it, I can just go down the portals and the ladders for a quick route to where I need to go. So you want to get to level 3. So we're on current level 2, and we'll just go down here, and we will be on level 3. So this is this green one, and what you want to do is kill the spiders in here. There are giant spiders. These actually auto-attack you, so you can stay here while not without clicking them. As long as you put your auto-retaliate on, 
you can stay here for I think it's around 10 minutes before they will stop and if they do stop attacking you you can run into this corner and then into this corner over here and finally into this bottom corner and then when you go back into the middle they will attack you again another there's also if you go through here and this door there's another group of spiders over here you can kill so and these are obviously exactly the same and you'll get all of these this spot is normally less crowded there's only, only one person here so you might get better XP there, you might want to try that spot. But this is the main room, and there's also one more spot ahead. So you want to go through here. If I can actually go through. And obviously this is again the same. I think it's a, it's slightly busier than the than the second spot I showed you and sometimes it's less crowded but this is also a very good spot if they stop auto attacking you in the main room you can just go over here so this is around you can get 60k per hour but at level 40 you'll probably be getting around 20k but as you get as you level up you'll be getting a lot more XP per hour and these do not drop anything, so you can just stay here and let them attack you. Now you should have level 60 in attack, strength and defense. And this is where training combat becomes a lot more interesting. And you have many more choices and you'll be getting a lot higher XP per hour. So if you watch the previous part, level 40 to 60, you'll know where we are, we're in the stronghold of security and here you can kill the spiders 299. That's a method quite a lot of people do and I am currently training at spiders to max combat but you can get, like, now that you're level 60 you will get around 60k per hour I think you can get a bit more depending on your gear but you'll get at least 60k per hour here and so 99 will seem a long way away which is about 150 hours from level 60 but obviously it's definitely worth getting max combat so you can just stay here to 99 and keep training and you'll get 60k per hour now the second method of training from level 60 combat stats is at bandits is located located in the desert and you want to remember to bring a zamorak or saradamin item as this will make the bandits aggressive to you what you want to do is go to the bar and you will find a lot of bandits here what you do want to do is find an empty world so you will have all the bandits attacking you also this is where you'll be using prayer as opposed to food so you want to just put on protect from melee and take prayer pots and prayer renewals and your whole invent as well as a water skin I think I'm not sure if you can lose health in this bar but just to be safe I'll take a water skin and you'll be getting 60 plus k an hour so it's very good XP but you will be using prayer pots so it's more expensive than training at spiders they do drop stuff but I would recommend leaving it to get the best XP you also want to be on normal cur uh, not curses you want to be on normal prayers as, as opposed to curses as you don't want to be reflecting deflecting melee as that doesn't give you any XP for deflection also you can put piety or chivalry on to increase your attacks increase the damage you do but it will use more prayer points so it depends if you had the money to spend but it will mean shorter trips as well 
So you just want to stay here, and you can do this to 99 as it's a fairly fast method, but you just want to remember you want to find an empty world so you'll have all of the bandits on you. And you also need a Zamorak and Saradamin item. The third method of trading to 99 is at Armoured Zombies. So for this, you will need to have started, but I recommend completing the Defender of Barak. And by doing that, you can talk to Heartwing at the top of the Barak castle, and he will teleport you to Armoured Zombies. Also, you will need a Sal Ramiut, which you don't need it, but it's highly recommended as it gives you a damage boost against undead, so that means zombies. This can be obtained from the Haunted Mine quest and also the Layer of Tarn Resoror. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but that quest will enchant the amulet so you get more, it will be stronger against zombies. So what you want to do is go down this trapdoor and you'll see the armoured zombies here. These will also attack you so you can just stand and let them attack. This also will be using prayer. So if you're a lower level, I would recommend protect from melee, but I find I can survive purely using piety, and also I bring along a bunyip, but this will give you higher XP rate if you use piety, but you will have, you obviously you shouldn't put on the protect from protection spells, as you'll use up a lot more prayer points, and unless you have the money there, it's pointless as it costs a lot more and the trips will be shorter. So I have been getting 95k XP an hour here. So, and I don't have the enchanted salve amulet. So you could probably get 100 plus K an hour, which is definitely an extremely good method of training. You can get 100k an hour and I would highly recommend this one. And I would say I wouldn't really train at bandits, it's not that good. Spiders is best if you want complete AFK training because with this one you've got to keep drinking prayer pots and if you don't you could die if you just leave it. There's also one more method which I'm not going to show but it's killing gorillas in Apatol using Darok set and that gives I think it's 60 to 90k an hour XP and it's very good but you need full Daryx which I don't have and it's a bit more risky because you lower your HP so you can essentially one hit the apes but there is an altar there so you have unlimited prayer points essentially but it can be a bit more risky so I would stick with this armored zombies but Apatol is very good, spiders is also what I'd recommend for complete AFK training and what I forgot to mention is these do drop charms as you can see I've got a green, blue and gold already so I would recommend picking up the charms but just leave all the rest of the drops they're not really worth it but that is the main portion of the guide done that's the leveling so I'll now move on to summoning Okay, so I've gone over the leveling portion of the guide, now I'm going to talk a bit about summoning. So I use, I always use summoning to train, what I would recommend is using a healing familiar. The three healing familiars are the void spinner, the bunyip and the unicorn stallion. So as for the void spinner, unless you make the pouches, I can't seem to buy the pouches on the G, so that requires level 34 summoning, but I wouldn't recommend using it, I'd probably just stick with food. The Unicorn Stallion is mainly for bossing, and I wouldn't recommend using it for training, so what you're left with is the Bunyip, and this I have found is the best familiar for training. What I tend to do is I summon one Bunyip, I then if I'm training at spiders, let's say, I will summon the bunyip, then run to either the the summoning obelisk here, or there is one in the stronghold of security, so it just depends if 
I remember which one to go to. So I'll just renew my points and then I'll have enough points for when this bunyip runs out, which is in 44 minutes, I'll have enough points to summon the second one. You also still want to be taking a whole invent of food and potions, but the bunyips will mean you pretty much won't have to heal the whole time the bunyip is active, so that really helps. So essentially you've got like 90 minutes of using no food and then plus, I don't know, maybe an hour at spiders of using your shark. So that's a very long trip you can do and the bunyip really helps you quite a lot doing that. So for any training spot, especially like for armored zombies and for bandits, I would bring, Ash well no, for bandits it's not really required because you're using protect from melee but for armored zombies if you're using piety only i would recommend using a bunyip so you don't have to heal for apatol using protect from melee as well so no need to bring a bunyip and then obviously spiders is the best place to bring it because you can stay there for about two and a half hours on one event so probably more than that so that really does help you so i would definitely recommend using a bunyip over any other familiar. This requires 68 summoning, so it's a fairly high level, but it can be achieved quite quickly. So yep, yeah, that is summoning. Next we have Slayer. So I'm not actually going to be showing me doing Slayer, but I'm just going to talk you through it. You can train combat using Slayer. Obviously, if you're going to do that, you know how to get your task and everything. You should have done the Smoking Kills quest as well, which will give you extra rewards. But So uh, let's just assume that you've done that if you want to train Slayer with combat, so, or rather combat with Slayer. So what you're going to want is, I would recommend at least 80 melee stats, 90 is probably good as well, That was, I mean that's probably better. And, because if you just purely train Slayer with 90 combat, with 90 melee stats, you will get to 99 Slayer before you can max out all 3 melee stats, I think. So that's definitely a very good method to go. I'm not going to be doing that. I might start doing Slayer at around 95 melee stats, but at the moment I just want to get my melee stats up. But it def if you are going to, if you are planning to max out Slayer in the future, then you definitely want to train it while you're training up melee as opposed to getting 99 and then going back and getting the Slayer XP because it's kind of a waste of time. But then if you're not going to get Slayer up in the future, then obviously there's you don't really need to listen to this part. And you can just do the normal methods of training, but Slayer is definitely useful and I would recommend doing it at 80 or even better at 90. And I guess, I think at 95 it is, you'll be getting the best XP rates you can with Slayer. I mean, unless you're 99, but... 95 you'll be getting very good XP rates so that's when I'm probably going to start it and that's a good time to start it as well because you will get you will you will max layer out I think before you get max melee stats so it's really up to you but oh yeah uh, the other thing to mention is you can make quite a lot of money you can make hundreds of mils from Slayer so that is another factor if you want to train that to get up your melee stats. Okay, the final portion of this guide will be on gear and just a few tips and tricks really. So, as for gear setups, this is the setup I use. I've got barrows, it doesn't really matter which one, but I, I believe you don't want the Verax plate body because that doesn't give us good as stats as Guthans or Darrocks or Toregs. But you can just use full barrows. I've got a glory, you can swap that out for your, for a fury. 
I've got a fire cape, an obsidian cape is fine, but fire cape or the rhino cape is best. Then Ring of Wealth doesn't really matter. I've got Bandos boots, but you could use dragon. I've got dragon gauntlets. I think you could use Barrow's gloves for there, but I don't have them. And then as for weapons, I'd recommend a weapon dragon defender if you're going to be training attack or strength, or you want to train them all at once. If you're going to be training, oh, uh, sorry, attack or defense is for a whip. If you're going to be training strength, you want a Saradomin sword, which I've actually given to my friend, so I can't show it in this video, but you want to be using that because that will get you the best strength XP. Also, just a quick note on attack styles. So, attack and defense is for a whip, strength is for a, a Saradomin sword. If you want to train them all at once, I would use uh, controlled on a whip, but I would only do this to maybe up to 90 combat stats from 90 I would recommend just training once and getting it to 99 but you want to keep all of your stats at a fairly close level, maybe 5 levels apart as you can see I've got all of mine to 88 and uh, that's just another point I'm not max combat as you can see I'm not really that close but I do know how to get there I know which way I'm going to get there, so I sort of know, I know like how to make this guy the best ways really, which is why I'm making it, but obviously I'm not max, so maybe some people will have a better idea, but I think these are some of the best methods you can train combat with. So you want to keep these levels close, this is the sort of the recommended gear setup, and I went over the attack styles you want. Also, I went over the bunyip in the summoning section, so you want to bring, you want to summon one of those and then have another in your invent. Also, potions are very key to training. I normally bring two of each of these super attack, strength and defenses to when I'm training at spiders, but also any training method you want to bring, bring these. You can miss out super defenses if you may be short on money. And you can down, downgrade these to just normal attack and strength and defense pots. But this is what I recommend, just bringing super attack, strength and defense flasks. As you'll be able to, the defense, defense will help you be hit less. So you can just stay longer than obviously, but attack and strength will give you better XP rates. Also, I just bring a full invent of sharks and... So I've just got enough for a full invent there. I need to go buy some more, but I'll bring a full invent of sharks. So this is the typical setup I will take if I'm going to train at spiders. I've got my bunny for someone, I've got a spare pouch, I've got the all the flasks, and then I've got a full invent of sharks. So this will last me around two and a half to three hours at spiders at least, and it's a very good setup. I recommend it. To get to maximize your XP and your length of trips. So, as for lower levels, this is sort of a high level setup. I'm just gonna look, I'm gonna bring up the defense guide to see what you can wear. So, Barrows is at 70. So, as soon as you hit 70, I'd recommend Barrows. Now, you can choose Bandos, which is probably better. You can if you hit 65 and you've got the money, then I'd recommend Bandos, but Barrows is a cheaper alternative and gives better stats. It's just you have to repair it, which will cost you qu quite a bit in the long run. I think it's around, well, it's around 2 mil to get to 99 to repair it, maybe like 3 mil. So you've got to buy it and then repair it, which is still cheaper than Bandos, but Bandos is better because there's you have to worry about repairing it, it's always there. And Bandos is a very good armor to to have, which I am saving up for it, so I would get Bandos if you've got the money, otherwise just power to 70 and get barrows. As for the lower levels, you just want to wear the best metal armor you can, so just wear full bronze and or and then all the way up to full dragon. I would recommend from level 60 and below I'll use the best skimmy you can so 
use a dragon skimmy or mix skimmy whatever you can use dragon is definitely good armor you could probably get away with using dragon to 99 but again band offs or barrows is definitely what i would recommend using and before i forget the last thing i should mention is if you haven't got defender i'd recommend getting one but you can use the uh, obsidian shield which is a that's a good alternative but you won't get as high attack bonuses so we were getting slightly less xp but that is all i really wanted to talk about in this guide that's the 1 to 99 leveling guide as well as a bit on summoning slayer and gear setups i might do some more guides in the future for range and magics because i do know how to get those to 99 i'm currently in the process when i get the money also i might do a prayer guide for well, prayer is pretty straightforward and i'll see with these other skills like wood cutting i'm fairly close to 99 so i know how to get that up but that's the end of the guide hope you enjoyed it and found it useful i uh, thank you all for watching and i'll see you all later